It's such a joy and a delight to have you join us for today's broadcast. I trust that today's broadcast will be a blessing to you. Why don't you sit back, relax, and please don't change that channel and let us see what God has to say to us today. Never let that be the reason why you do any good thing that you do. It's interesting the metaphor that Jesus uses for the word of God. He calls it a seed. I don't want what God has for you, but I want all that God has for me. Corinthians chapter number 13 in the King James. First Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to read from verses 1 through 8. Amen. Praise the Lord. Though I speak with the tongues of men and in my volume and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass. Or a clanging symbol. Though I see, though I speak with the tongues, tongues is a King James uh, uh, synonym for languages. So what he's saying is, though I am linguistically proficient, and I can speak multiple languages: English, Spanish, French, Chinese. Whatever. Swahili. Ibo, Yoruba, Ibo, Ibo. <laughs> Some people have Ibo names and they can't speak a word of Ibo. <laughs> Hausa, Twi. I'm linguistically proficient. I know it all. Tongues of men. That's physical language. And of angels. Spiritual language. I'm not only proficient and able to speak multi-physical multi languages, but also spiritual languages. And I have not love. I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. That's noise. He's letting me know no matter how linguistically effective or proficient I am, if I have not love, the sound that is coming out of me, instead of it being music, it will be noise. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, that's deep. Nothing I don't know. And all knowledge, that's heavy. In the field of law, in the field of medicine, in the field of computers, in the field of accounting, in the field of business, I know it all. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. And nothing is wrong with that. It's not saying that that action is wrong. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, but if I'm involved with that action, and though I give my body to be burned, 
And I have not love. Doing that without love profits me what? Before we go on to what love is, let me tell you what love is not. Love is not when he enters the room, I cannot breathe. That's not love, that's asthma. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotional thing. It's a commandment. It's an action. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's not a reaction. It is an action. It's a deliberation. It is what we have that those who don't know God cannot duplicate. That they cannot imitate. The money we have, they have. The education we have, they have. The title we have, they have. The health we have, they have. The love we have, they cannot have it. It's what Jesus said. This is how they will know that you are my disciples. Not because of the house you live in, or the car you drive, or the title you have, or the position you're in. The love you have one for another. This is crucial. This is what sets us apart. This is what proves who we are. This is the proof of his mark on our lives. Say amen, somebody. And if we have him, we have it. We might not be showing it, we have it. Like my six-pack. I have six-pack. <laughs> the fasting has helped me a little bit. But the thing is, it's not showing. It's not showing. Every time I look in the mirror, ah, this thing show in Jesus' name. Jesus is supposed to work for everything, but it has not yet to work for that one. <laughs> I got to carry myself at the gym for that one. It comes not by Jesus' name. That's why the Bible says, work out your salvation, not work for. Work out, because you have it, so work it out. So when you work out, what you have becomes evident. That's what, that's what love is. We have it. The day we receive Jesus, we got it in our soul. But it does not automatically come out. It has to be worked out. And when you work out, it takes discipline, it takes consistency, it takes growth, it takes dedication, it takes uh, uh, challenges. That's why there are some people in church that you want pastor to kick out, he's not going to kick them out. Because God brought them inside church to train you. Because relationship is the gymnasium with which we practice love. And the proof of love is not in being nice to people who are nice. No! The proof of love is being nice to people who are nasty. It is bearing, it is loving the unlovable and bearing up with the unbearable. That's what love is. Somebody crosses you out, you feel like crossing them out. You remember this message and you hold your meal and you go, mm, God bless you. You're getting it. You're getting it. Praise the Lord. It's workout, serious workout. No, this is no joke workout. Serious workout. There's a consistent thing. And it's serious. And we're going to see some of the reasons why this is important. Our love walk. Because what happens when we don't work out is we don't take the advantage of time. Praise the Lord. Your testimony is how you react when the times are horrible. Because the way you carry yourself, people know that there has to be something different with you. How in the world are you able to do that, what you're going through? Tell me how you can tell them to the God who strengthened you to be able to go through that. 
Say amen, somebody. So they asked this Christian lady, what is your secret? What's wrong with you? She said, well, I read in my Bible that the God we serve neither, neither sleeps nor slumbers. So I figured if he is on the awake duty, it's a waste of time me being awake too. So I am going to sleep and let God do his work. Tell your neighbor, go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed off of what you can't fix. So you stayed awake. And you had to be patient until God fixed it. And then this year, you're staying awake again. You're breaking God's heart. Because you have not learned. Because sometimes, God will allow you to go through fire. <laughs> God doesn't always deliver us from fire. Sometimes he delivers us in fire. Oh. Like the three Hebrew boys. You're going to go in. But your testimony is that though there's fire all around you, you will not be burned. He gives you temperate weather in the midst of turmoil circumstances. He gives you peace in the midst of turbulence and chaos and commotion. Your heart is established. Because you know who you are, you know whose you are, and you know where he brought you from, and how he brought you out. You know that. When your back was against the wall, and you thought you were going to die, and God provided a way out of no way. That same God is still alive. He's still alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> You are not Jesus Jr. now. Come on, you know you. Don't pretend. Because the hypocrisy we all have, and I think we all have it, is that we are cognizant of the wrong, more cognizant of the wrong done to us, and less cognizant of the wrong we do to people. I hear all the time as pastor, why do you know what he did? He cost my great-grandmother. He cost my tribe. He said we are no good. And I'm looking, I'm looking at her. 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 I'm, because I'm pastor, I'm supposed to be nice. I can't tell her. But in my head, I'm, and he did all of that, and you said nothing, right? You said absolutely nothing. I did all of that. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes we have to video some of us and show you what you said. And you'll be shocked because you didn't even realize we're all like that. But as you begin to grow in the Lord and become more mature, you ought to be less cognizant of the wrong done to you and more cognizant of not doing wrong to people. That's growth. That means I'm not, let, I'm not going to allow anybody win me in this love walk. I'm not going to let you outlove me. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Whether there are prophecies, they'll fail. Whether there are tongues, they'll cease. Whether there's knowledge, you will vanish away. Vanish away someday. Love never fails. Love never fails. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. God, I have not even... Lord, help me. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified. Somebody say qualified us. Say it again. Say qualified us. Say it one more time. Say qualified us. God did not consult you to qualify me. God did not consult anybody to qualify you. So stop qualifying yourself when God has qualified you. He did not qualify based on people's expectations, opinions, adjudications, or perceptions. No. He didn't consult any of them. He qualified you the day you gave your life to Christ. That's what he's saying because this letter was written to the church in Colossae. He qualified you based on what he did. It wasn't based on anything you did. It wasn't based on whether you successfully fasted in the month of January. It wasn't based on how much you prayed, how much the Bible you read. No, 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 not based on any of that. Just as you are, God qualified you. I put the scripture back up. Put the scripture, put the scripture back up. He qualified you. You're qualified. Say that, say that with me. I, I am qualified. qualified. Let's say it again. I, I am qualified. You may not think I'm qualified, but your opinion is irrelevant. 
That's why I refuse to allow you tell me if I'm qualified or not. I don't care who you are. Because God qualified me not based on what I did, but based on all he did. Tell your neighbor, now God do him. Now God do him. All I did was just, I was just a beneficiary recipient of what God did. But watch this. Watch this. This is important. To be partakers, that means I'm a legal partaker, of the inheritance of the saints. That means saints do have an inheritance. They do have an inheritance. In the light. That inheritance is in the light. It's not in darkness. It's in the light. Hallelujah. And that's what I want to talk about to us this morning. See, I'm still in the preamble. I'm still in preamble. I might keep you here till 2000, to the next palindromic calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Our inheritance is in the light. Lord, help us like only you can in Jesus' name. Our inheritance is in the light. Child of God, your love walk is important. It's crucial. It's not automatic. It's going to take effort. It's, like, it's exactly like work out. That's why I said work out your salvation. So you have to put 1 Corinthians 13 before you. And watch how you do. Love is kind. Who was I not kind to? Love is not rude. Who was I rude to? Love is patient. Love is envious. Am I envious? Is there any envy in my heart? You just, because the most important person for you to lead is yourself. It's easy. It's really if you, are, if you are gifted, it's easy to teach other people. It's easy to preach to other people. But the most important person, the most crucial person, you have to move away from, from, from everybody else. I move to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Am I easily provoked? Do, do I, does any little thing just make me go off? This is why that's, this is the reason why that's important. Because the Bible tells me, oh Lord. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. This is important. Look at what it said. For in Christ Jesus... Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith walking through love. Say that with me. Faith walks through love. Let's say it again. Faith walks through love. God, that's heavy. Circumcision or uncircumcision. First of all, if you're a guy, because I know it's tough for the sisters to understand this, you have to be glad you didn't leave at this time. Because you know, when they used to circumcise, they didn't have anesthesia or lidocaine. They didn't even have scalpel. They used to use rock. I just thought that should tell you. I just thought that should make it clear. They call them flints, rock. And they didn't do it when you were eight days old, like most of us had. They did it on your bar mitzvah. When you're about to enter adulthood, you never forget the pain as long as you live. Never. And they'll, come on, guys. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Somewhere in the Old Testament, it was used... <laughs> As, as a ploy for battle, and they had all the men circumcised and everything, and they wiped them out. So what happened? Because if the early church was Jewish, and Jewish people were circumcised as a covenant, as, as Abrahamic covenant, and they were demanding that Gentiles who came to God in Christ be circumcised too. Isn't that kind of wicked? So Paul had to step in, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. When I get to heaven, I'm just going to give Apostle Paul some hug. Just, for this alone, just 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll prostrate on the floor. Thank you, sir. <laughs> he said it's not about your religious dogma. Not about your rules and your regulations or your cultures or your traditions. This is an idiom for that. Be less concerned about your tradition and more concerned about treating people right. That's what he's saying. Because you're so religious, but you're so mean and nasty. You're full of dead man's bones. God is not interested in that kind of religion. Real religion is when you're pragmatic, you're practical, you care about people, and you're kind, and you're considerate, and you're respectful, and you are loving. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, but faith working by love. Let me go deeper. Faith walking by love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we read it, verse 2, verse 3, I think. He said, if I have faith that I could move mountains, but I have not love, I'm nothing. You remember that? We read that. Faith that could move mountains. Faith that could. It means the faith has the ability to move mountains. But the faith will never be able to move the mountain without love because faith only works through love. Love is the engine for faith. I can have a fancy car there, Tesla. Oh, and it can take me from 1541 Belair Boulevard to 331 where I live. But if you remove the engine, even though the car has the ability to take me, the car will not be able to take me because the engine is out. That's what it's telling you and I. That you could have so much faith. Your faith is developed. Your faith has been honed. You've, been, you've heard so much word. Faith coming by hearing, hearing, by the word of God. You know so much Bible from Genesis to Revolution. You know your prayers are hinged on your faith. You know that. The reason why you pray is because you have faith. If you don't have any faith, if you don't believe in God, you won't pray. Your prayer life is proof of your faith life. But your faith cannot work without love. That's the reason why some of our prayers are not answered. In fact, the Bible says when a man mistreats his wife, his prayers are hindered. You know why? Because his love life is messed up. And even though he has faith, but faith only works through love. And once the engine is out, though the car is still there, the car is useless because the engine is out. So I have to start watching my love life. Because my faith cannot work. It can't work without love. Things would happen, favor. See, I can, I can sing about the blessings, dance about the blessings, shout about the blessings. But I'm talking about real walking in the blessings of God. It happens when I'm watchful of my love life. Am I forgiven? Am I kind? Am I endure? Love endures all things. Praise the Lord. What is it I'm believing God for? Sometimes it's not because I don't have enough faith. Because I have faith that could move I have huge faith. But it's because my faith is not working, because I don't have the engine for faith. Love is absent from it. And what I need is to watch my love life. Where do I need to make correction? What do I, I stop fooling myself? I'm making excuses. He said, he said, he said, do I bestow my goods to the poor? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. But I have not love, I am nothing. What does he mean by that? I, I think I told you, I'm doing what's right, but for the wrong motive, I'm nothing. Because men only see what you do. They see the answer. 
But God not only sees what you do, he sees why you're doing it. With God, when you do the right thing for the wrong reason, it is wrong. That's why all of us, we have to always watch, why am I doing it? Am I doing it because I want to show off? Am I doing it because I want to show both? Am I doing it because I want to impress people? Am I? Because when you're doing it for the right reason, some things will be evident. Praise the Lord. When you're doing it for the right reason, it will not matter to you how many people are in church or not. Hello, somebody. Because you're not there because of them. <laughs> You're there because of him. When you're doing it for the right reason, you cannot care how people do during praise and worship. Oh, they're watching me. Oh, oh. That's to being self-conscious. You're in the presence of God. Love is not selfish or self-centered. No. Praise the Lord. You're doing it for the right reason. You, 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 you don't give somebody money and then you announce on Facebook, social media, hey, look at what I did. We are so thankful for the opportunity to be able to come to your home, your office, or wherever it is you're viewing this broadcast. Now, if you don't know Jesus, can I pray with you? Just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be my Lord. I receive you today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, please call to let us know. Our phone number is on the screen. We would love to pray with you. Or if you want us to pray with you concerning anything, we would love to agree with you in prayer. But be kind to go onto our website, call into our church office, let us hear from you. We would love to pray with you. Additionally, if the message has been a blessing to you and you want the message in its entirety for a small donation to the ministry, we will rush the CD or the DVD to you. Call in, let us know, we'll get it down to you. And if you're ever in the Houston area, we would love to have you fellowship with us at Grace International Church. Look forward to seeing you. And remember these words from Romans chapter 5 verse 17, the B part says, And we who have received abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in Christ Jesus. We will be back at this same station at this same time next week to bring you more word from the Lord. We love you. God bless you.